Let's talk about how to control risk. So you've got an ISO 9001 management system, you've got an ISO 14001 management system, you've got an ISO 45001 management system, or an ISO 27001 management system for quality, safety, environment, or information security. Any of those standards, let's talk about how we're gonna control our risks. So thanks for joining us here on Best Practice TV as we're talking about how to control risk. In a previous video, we talked about how to rank risk. This one's all about control. And there's two parts to it. There's part A and there's part B around controlling risk. The first, obviously, is to focus on what we're actually setting out to achieve. We wanna minimize the consequences and we wanna minimize the frequency or the likelihood. So the, the stuff that can go wrong, we wanna obviously go into preventative action. So we wanna prevent how bad the damage is from something happening, so how much we upset a customer, how bad an injury or an incident is, how bad an environmental issue is, or a data security breach. So we wanna obviously minimize the consequences and focus on that, and we wanna minimize how often it could happen. So the number of people that are exposed to a health and safety risk, or the number of customers that are exposed to a potential stuff up in our process. Now we can look at the two parts of that. Obviously, the control, so we wanna look at the deciding on the type of control, and we've got a prioritize matrix for that. And then we're gonna think about the plan. So the first thing is to look at the hierarchy of control. So obviously the first thing we wanna do is eliminate. So is that an option? Can we eliminate the risk that we've identified? So we've, we've ranked our risks, we've prioritized them. Now we're going through and we're saying, well, that's the thing that could go wrong. The consequences are something we can't accept. Can we eliminate it? Now, of course you can. It's all about decisions. So you don't start a process that's gonna cause, you know, if something's gonna kill somebody in an oh &S perspective, then don't do it. And so that's eliminating that particular risk. But if it's something that's absolutely unavoidable, what are the other controls we can put in place? So we can eliminate. Can we substitute? So can we sub have a substitution? And these are just trigger words to get you thinking about, well, can we substitute what we're doing? Can we use safer chemicals? Can we use a different database? Can we contact our customers in a different way? Can we do a different environmental initiative? And it's all about substitution. So we've tried elimination, we've tried substitution. Can we engineer a solution to this problem? So we're looking at engineering solutions. We could, it could be software. So we've got a new CRM that's gonna keep our customers happy and it's gonna avoid issues happening. We could put guards on our equipment so they're safer. We could talk about um, engineering solutions to manage our environmental issues. Uh, we could have software and firewalls and different you know, parts to our information security management system and their engineering solutions. So the risk could still be there, the consequences are still there, but we've got an engineering solution. Um, now we start to talk about uh, administration. We talk in the last step, we, we've got a safety thing, we talk about personal protective equipment or we talk about task management. So that's our last option. So when we're talking about administration, we're talking about policies and procedures. We're talking about signage, the sorts of things that people can ignore. So it's difficult to ignore the risk, you know, if we've eliminated it, it's just not gonna happen. But if you put a sign up and it says it's dangerous, then it's still, you know, this is less effective than this. So it's about effectiveness. Then obviously personal protective equipment, you know, it's really, really noisy. So we're gonna put on earmuffs. We wanna try and take the noise away by eliminating it, not just rely on the earmuffs. We want to try and take the issue away instead of relying on someone to do a particular task that they could forget. So we're just relying on something to do something and it's part of their habit and they fall out of their habit and they forget to do it. So it's about effectiveness. So we talk about effective. So these top ones are more effective than these ones in robust risk management. So that's part one, it's called the hierarchy of control. We've taken it from the oh &S and hazard management industry, and we're starting to apply it to quality systems, environment systems, information security management systems. So that's part one. Part two now is to say, well, we've talked about it before on Best Practice TV, who, what, when, where, and how. The why, because we've got risks. So what's the plan? This is all about the plan for each of the risks. And so we're using the hierarchy of control to decide on the controls, but then we're putting a plan in place that's got who, what, when, where, and how. And that's really important to overlay these two parts to control risk. I hope you liked the video, it's really simple. If you want a practical example for your industry, hit subscribe above, subscribe to our YouTube channel and get lots of free updates. 
and post a comment below with a question. We'll answer your question. We love doing it for you here. It's what we're all about here at Best Practice. Simple businesses that are fun, efficient and sustainable. And we'll see you soon next time on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.